Good morning, and thank you so much for being back with us today. Um, I'm uh, excited to talk about this message with you this morning. Um, if you can hear me and you're able to comment, please let me know that you can hear this okay. Um, but uh, really thankful for you guys to be back here with us again this week. Um, especially you who watch us faithfully every week. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I can't express to you enough how much I appreciate you after your week and after no doubt, uh, I'm, if it's any, anything as busy and crazy as our family's weeks are, um, for you to just even take the time to sit for even just 10 or 15 minutes each week and listen to what we have to say um i I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart and um if if you could if we've if our ministry has blessed you in any way please feel free to leave a comment uh please feel free to email and let us know um probably the biggest downside of digital ministry like this is that you don't see the other end of the screen you don't see the other end of the camera and um it's really gratifying and um i guess you would say um affirming in physical ministry when you're standing looking at 30 40 50 60 or more people each week um and you can at least see the reaction on people's faces and you can feel the engagement and you can kind of tell where your words are hitting, you know, or if you're even hitting at all. Um, but with digital ministry, it's kind of like in the military, there's a term called uh, spray and pray. And that's basically <laughs> sticking your gun around a corner and shooting and hoping you're hitting something. And, um, that's a lot of times what it feels like. I know that's not what is going on because with digital ministry, you just, um, you just do what you feel like God's telling you to do. And, um, you speak the words and God uses them to direct other people and to help other people. And so, um, I try to be mindful of that, but if, If you would, please uh, give us a comment, give us a, send us an email. Um, Or if you don't really want to do that, uh, hey, if if we've blessed you, then please make sure you hit the like button. And that encourages YouTube to put this video in front of more people. Um, I know there's there's a lot of things going on, a lot of turmoil uh, in the world and in our culture. I've tried to do my best with this ministry and this platform to not be political and to not do what everybody else does, it feels like. Not everyone, but quite a few. Um, And I've just really tried to focus on the Word of God. And uh, like we've said so many times before, we can sum up what what our our goal is or our, our driving force is. And it's just this simple question of what did God say? Literally four words sums it up. What did God say? Um, And of course, that comes from a perspective that every word of God is pure. Just what the Bible says um, comes from a perspective that we are holding the word of God. And that is our perspective. Uh, I want to start with he- in Hebrews 12. Th- this is where we're going to be today. I'm not going to be going to any other scriptures. I literally don't have any notes. I don't have any scriptures jotted down. Um, <clears throat> but uh, this chapter, I've listened to it now probably, the chapter itself, I've, I've listened to it at least 12 times, 10 or 12 times this week. Um, something like that. I've read through it at least as many times. Um, and so the, the, the notes and the messages that has spoken to me this week has been very encouraging. And so I I hope to convey that to you about 
the unshakable kingdom. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with the endurance, with endurance, the race set out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God, the right hand of the throne of God, rather. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners, so that you will not <clears throat> grow weary and lose heart. I want to stop right there. We're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Um, that is in reference to Hebrews chapter 11. If you're familiar with that chapter, you know that that is talking about a lot of the great heroes of the faith that came before. Even before the days of the New Testament, the writer of Hebrews is talking about the faithful ones all throughout, quoting some of them, their names from from the Bible, from the Old Testament. and um, And so he's talking about such a great cloud of witnesses or you know, them in that heavenly realm surrounding us and what we're doing. They are looking at us and waiting for us uh, to run the race that is set out for us. Um, you know, he goes on to write here in verses 4 through 12. <clears throat> I'm not going to read the entire thing, but talking about how that suffering uh well in verse 7 he writes endure suffering as discipline god is treating you as sons for what son is not disciplined by his father if you do not experience discipline like everyone else then you are illegitimate children and not true sons so what this does is the discipline it doesn't it's not enjoyable at the time it is painful all of the struggles that we face whether uh whether it's bills anything in our daily life i'm trying to really nail the application of this here a everything that we struggle with <clears throat> that we face from week to week it is it's it's as if it's plowing um it's plowing a garden. It's breaking up. There's a term of plowing and breaking up fallow ground. And, and just really, it's getting into that dirt that you can't plant anything in initially. And you have to break up the, the dirt. You have to break up the sod. You have to really, uh, you have to just really till it and get it fine-tuned out. And then you plant a seed in it. And until you do that, it's going to be very hard for a garden to grow. And that that's one of the things here. I'm going to read verse 11 of Hebrews 12. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your limp hands and weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. And the whole point of this comes toward the end of the chapter in verse 18 the writer of hebrews is talking about the difference of approaching god and approaching a mount zion in a time before the cross of christ had taken place before the prophecy that jesus fulfilled comes and he writes and he talks about how that uh, I'll, I'll just read this here, verse 18. 
For you have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast or a voice that made its hearers beg that no further word be spoken. For they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that even Moses said, I am trembling with fear. That this is a time where the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, had not fully come yet. This is a time before Jesus. This is a time before the cross. This is a time before the prophecies of the new covenant that is that is to come the all of the there are so many of the writers in the old testament david and the psalms the prophets so many of them write about the promise of the messiah to come because they knew that while they had the law of god they had the, they're in the old covenant the true fulfillment of the old covenant in in Jesus had not came yet and so there was this continual reminder of their fallenness and of their sin and so much work had to go into those sacrifices and raising those animals and then offering the best of it the best of your animals um to God and the priest atoning for your sin <clears throat> and there was so much toil there. But the writer of Hebrews says in verse 22, Instead, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to myriads of angels in joyful assembly, to the congregation of the firstborn enrolled in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. <clears throat> I'm just going to read the rest of this because this is crucial to what we're talking about this morning. See to it that you do not refuse him. The wind... Made me lose my place. <clears throat> that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if the people did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject him who warns us from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, Once more I will shake not only the earth, but heaven as well. The words once more signify the removal of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that the unshakable may remain. Therefore, verse 28, Therefore, since we are receiving an unshakable kingdom, let us be filled with gratitude, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. And in the next chapter, I want to read this. For here we have, we do not have a permanent city, but we are looking for the city that is to come, and that being the new Jerusalem. <clears throat> there is so much wonder that lies ahead of us. we're you know we're we're surrounded by so much in our in our world in our lives that that can be shaken and that is shaken uh, uh, week by week you see things in the news and it just seems like there's there's nothing you can depend on anymore there's there's nothing excuse me there's nothing that is a firm place that you can build upon i mean our language just continually changes and 
uh, there's there's so many things. Um, you almost don't even know what's healthy anymore. Um, you know, organic things uh, now. There, there's additives and chemicals or materials in the packaging that's not good. Like, a, it just seems like in our modern world, there's just there's nothing that you can depend on, and so you can't have hope or faith in anything. Things continually change, and things just change, 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 and change. And you, you, you begin to get into this way of thinking that you're always jumping from place to place to place to place to place. Um, Then you look back on a few years of that, you, there's nothing substantial that remains, but it is not so with God. That's not how things are with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is king. He is reigning right now. He his kingdom is an unshakable kingdom. It cannot fall apart. It cannot fall away. There is nothing in it that we not me, not you, not anybody else no preacher that falls and their uh, their testimony is just seems to be forever tainted um there's nothing that affects the kingdom of god the presidential election here in america that'll be decided and you know votes the votes will be cast within a few days and and the results will be set in stone within the next two months. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter. That, that does not determine the outcome of the kingdom of God. We are and are part of an unshakable kingdom. We are receiving. You, you know something? <clears throat> when the writer of Hebrews wrote that, and he says, Therefore, since we are receiving, an unshakable kingdom. That was nearly, that was about 1,900 years ago. Okay? <clears throat> so we have been receiving this kingdom. Um, the scripture says, and uh, John writing in Revelation, he talks about how that we are a kingdom of kings and priests to our God. An unshakable kingdom. And I want to say this as well. You can't have hope in this if you're not part of this kingdom. You can't hear this message that I'm, this humble message I'm, I'm speaking to you today. Uh, you can't hear this or any other person talking about, any other preacher talking about, an unshakable kingdom in Christ Jesus that he is king over, and all of the glorious things that come with that, and all of the hope and all the promise and 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 the the new life that springs forth from that, if you're not part of that kingdom, it doesn't apply to you. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound mean, but that's just how it is. Are you part of the unshakable kingdom? Have you placed your hope on things eternal? Are you laying up treasure in heaven? Are you seeking first the kingdom of God and its righteousness? A kingdom where the righteousness of God flows completely un bothered, untouched, and unhindered by humankind. Are you part of that kingdom? Listen, if you are not, you will only continually go through this life bearing the weight of all 
of the stresses, the burdens, everything that this life includes now. More stresses and burdens than even people went through a hundred years ago. You will continue, you will continue to go through that on your own. Does it mean that once you're part of, the, the, of his unshakable kingdom that everything's a cakewalk? Absolutely not. But it does mean that what you feel, what you go through, what you uh, face, the fights that you have mentally, spiritually, in your spiritual being, when you're facing the powers of darkness and evil, it means that you you catch all the brunt of that, and there is no way you can stand with that. There's no way that that can continue. Come to Christ. Be a part of his unshakable kingdom. Put your hope and your trust in him. Build your hopes on things eternal. Standing on the promises. I don't have the words to that, or I would sing that. <laughs> I didn't even really, wasn't even prepared to sing something today. Um, but you know something? Not every video we upload has to be 55 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to put these into formats that more people will see. Why don't we just why don't we just pray? I feel like that's that's one thing I don't do enough in these messages is pray enough. Why don't you, if uh why don't, why don't you pray with me where you are there? <clears throat> and just pray in your own way. Father God, uh, I just ask you, Lord, to to just come and use this simple message that. I, I was somehow able to get together and um, I pray that you would use it to build people toward and into your kingdom. We are a house not built with hands. We are a people that's not uh, brought together by the energy of of someone else. Anyone who would hear this or who maybe won't hear this but agrees with us and are part of your kingdom. and Lord, we are all being drawn forward to you by your Spirit. Lord, as Lord Jesus, as you said in your earthly ministry, all who the Father gives me will come to me. Nothing will snatch them from my hand. And Lord, I just, I, I thank you for that, God. It is truly an honor and it is truly a wonderful thing to know you and, and, the, and the power of your resurrection. And God, I, I just pray, Lord, that so many more will come to you. And Lord, to those who watch us, God, who who are, are part of your kingdom as well, and they watch us for some kind of spiritual nourishment or they are a part of what we do here each week. Lord, I pray that you would go and, and strengthen them, bless them, and encourage them. Help them, God, as they go about their way day in and day out, Lord, on the... God, I pray that you would be with them most this week on the days, Lord, that are the hardest for them. I pray that your spirit would draw near to them. And God, I pray that everyone who, who will watch this message, God, I, I pray that beyond all else, they will firm, uh, that they will firmly ground themselves and anchor themselves into your word. Because, Lord, if there is no foundation, when the storms of this life come, 
and for some maybe are they haven't not only are not only are they coming but they're here god they will be moved if they're not standing on the rock if they're not standing on the firm foundation they will be shaken away with everything else but if they are part of the unshakable kingdom and they're standing on the unshakable word, then God, I know that you will not lose any of them. I just pray, Lord, that you will just go forth and touch those who need to be touched by you. I pray that you would heal those who need to be healed by you, whether physically or spiritually. But Lord, a physical healing will have to be done again. But God, once we are spiritually healed, we are forever changed. So God, I just pray, Lord, that you will help us, strengthen us, and may we hold tight to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I don't know what you're going to do with your life, but I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to live this life to the best of my ability and walk in the grace of Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose this day whom you will serve. God bless you and have a wonderful week. We will see you back here next Sunday morning.